My amendment uses the Holman rule to reduce the salary of Secretary Pete Buttigieg to one dollar. Pete Buttigieg has failed to serve the American people as the Secretary of Transportation. He has been busy calling roads racist, enforcing equity action plans, and implementing climate change initiatives rather than strengthening our nation's transportation and infrastructure systems and responding to emergencies like the train derailment in East Palestine. He stated, there is racism physically built into some of our highways. Every transportation decision is inherently, in many ways, a decision about equity. I would argue people driving on dirt roads every single day in rural America may feel that way. But our Secretary of Transportation, Pete Buttigieg, doesn't care about Americans in rural America. He's more interested in declaring that roads are built on skin color and racism. Ensuring, he also stated, ensuring equity and accessibility for every member of the traveling public is one of the Department of Transportation's highest priorities. Again, I'll point to rural America. In the same month he was sworn in, his department introduced racial equities and barriers to opportunities as a consideration for awarding discretionary grants, as if that's how funds should be awarded. In June 2022, he launched a $1 billion pilot program aimed at helping reconnect cities and neighborhoods racially segregated or divided by road projects. Under this program, over $100 million was awarded to tear down and rebuild a freeway in Detroit because it was considered racially divisive. Taxpayer dollars are being used to cover 80% of the project's funds. He has also intentionally tried to deceive the American people, as shown when a video surfaced of him faking a bike ride to a White House cabinet meeting. The video showed Secretary Buttigieg driving to the White House, but stopping in just enough time for his security detail to unload his bike from the back of the gas-guzzling SUV. He then rode his bike for the cameras to the White House as if he had been riding it all along. What a hypocrite. What a liar. Mr. Speaker, I reserve my time. Gentleman from uh, Georgia Reserves, for what purpose does the gentleman from Illinois seek recognition? This chair, I claim time in opposition. Recognized for five minutes. Mr. Chairman, we now enter the theater of the absurd. Again, for the second day in a row, let's have two white people talk about racial equality in the United States, because we know so much about it from having, oh, so much experience. But here we are. The reality of the situation is this isn't serious, but it is the new normal. If we don't like people, we'll pay them a dollar. If we disagree with them, we'll cut their salary. At some point in time, we have to recognize the fact that we are going to disagree. We are probably going to, for the most of the rest of our lives, live in a divided government. So when we disagree with the administration, or the administration disagrees with us, is the notion is, well, we just won't pay him anymore because it'll make a good sound bite or theoretically help us raise money because it sells well at home. But it doesn't do anything for our constituents. And the reality is public servants are doing their jobs and carrying out the policy of the administration they serve should be commended, not demonized. Our government is dependent on being able to attract the best talent to bring their skills to public service. Despite what's been said, the fact of the matter is some of the best and brightest out there sacrifice to go back to public service or stay with it when they could do much better in the private sector. Who's going to be willing to do that if their names are dragged in the political mud because they disagree with them? The secretary is a dedicated public service. This is not how we solve policy difference. We shouldn't make this personal. We can disagree without being disagreeable. I urge my colleagues to vote no on this amendment, and I reserve. 
Gentleman from Illinois Reserves, the gentlelady from Georgia is recognized. Mr. Speaker, how much time do I have remaining? Two minutes and 45 seconds. To, excuse me, two minutes, 15 seconds. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Uh, deserving a uh, taxpayer-funded paycheck is about job performance, not about personalities or identity politics. And let's all recall that Pete Buttigieg was formerly a mayor and was well known as Pothole Pete for not repairing all the potholes in the roads in the town that he served. So I assure you, this is about defunding his paycheck to a dollar, which I think is a dollar too high, for a Secretary of Transportation that is failing the American people when it comes to transportation, while implementing his tyrannical climate agenda through his office and preaching for the government to curb carbon emissions, Pete Buttigieg has reportedly taken at least 18 taxpayer-funded flights on private jets managed by the FAA. One of these flights was taken to receive an award from the Canadian Gay Rights Organization for advancing LGBTQ rights. American taxpayers don't want to pay for Pete Buttigieg to get awards for the way people have sex. That's not what the Secretary of Transportation should be doing. These fraudulent actions of Secretary Buttigieg illustrate that he is not to be trusted in leading our Department of Transportation. While Secretary Buttigieg was taking taxpayer-funded carbon-emitting private jets to receive LGBTQ awards, he failed to serve the Americans in East Palestine who were devastated by the train derailment and chemical spill earlier this year. In response to why he hadn't visited the community, he stated that he would visit when the time is right. It turns out the time was only right after President Trump visited, brought thousands of bottles of water, and pressured Secretary Buttigieg into visiting, ha, huh, and maybe doing his job. It took our Secretary of Transportation almost three weeks to visit after this unbelievable toxic catastrophe. Furthermore, under his watch as Secretary, the FAA was forced to order a ground stop for all air traffic in the U.S. due to a system outage. This was the first time in history the NOTAM system has ever failed, and it was the first time since 9-11. Mr. Speaker, is that the end of my time? Yes, ma'am. I urge my colleagues to vote for my amendment. Gentleman Thank you, Georgia's I yield. time has expired. Gentleman from Illinois is recognized. Gee, Mr. Chairman, I thought you were just pounding the gavel to uh, break the monotony, but I appreciate that. I, I have to be honest, Mr. Chairman. I'm not sure whether this argument is, is worthy of the dignity of this House, that people who take the highest level of government function, cabinet-level positions, and again, you can disagree with them, Mr. Chairman, all you want, but to make this so personal and to take their orientation uh, to task because you personally don't like the other people or their orientation when it's absolutely none of your business? Where has the Republican Party gone? Where has it come from a party that said, we're going to let people live their lives. We're not going to intrude on them at all. We're going to let them live personally. And the worst thing government can do is inflict their own beliefs upon them. It's exactly what the toxic atmosphere of language like we just heard is all about. It's not what we are as a country. Part of that personal freedom extends to everyone, even if they happen to be Secretary of Transportation. I apologize to the Secretary for, and all public servants who have to go through this disgraceful kind of treatment. I encourage my colleagues to vote no on this amendment, not worthy of this body. Does the gentleman yield back? I do. All oh, time has expired for both sides. The question is on the amendment offered by the gentlelady from Georgia. Those in favor say aye. Those opposed say no. In the opinion of the chair, the ayes have it. The amendment is agreed to.